Joining me is Wendell Potter. He is former vice president of corporate communications at Cigna. He's the author of the book Deadly Spin and also a columnist at the Center for Public Integrity and Huffington Post. Wendell, pleasure as always to talk to you. I think a really good place to start is in light of President Obama's reelection, we have seen certainly some candid admissions, at least, from the right that it is not likely now that uh, Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, is going to be repealed. Would you consider this kind of a locking in of the Affordable Care Act via the, the President Obama's reelection, or are there still hopes to repeal? I think it is locked in. I think that uh, uh, we'll see. This is a very important year for the Affordable Care Act. A lot has to be done. Just recently, the Department of Health and Human Services released some uh, long-awaited regulations that will be implemented this year. The uh, states have to get ready for the uh, exchanges that they have to set up. Uh, some are doing that and some are not. Uh, if they're not, the federal government will have to do it for them. So it's moving forward. I think what we have to worry about is not that it will be repealed. I don't think there'll be, so, there'll be votes in, uh, in the Senate uh, to sustain a uh, uh, or to, to pass a bill to repeal it or really gut it, but what we have to do is to make sure that it's not weakened to the point that uh, it's not doing what Congress intended, which is to expand coverage to as many people as possible and to begin to control cost. So is it possible this idea that uh, it may just not be funded? In other words, the law as a law is not repealed, but that it, the, the Congress could act in a way to just simply not provide the funding necessary to implement some aspects of the program? You know, I think that it's conceivable, but I don't think it'll be able to do a lot of that. Uh, much of the funding is already in the law. Uh, much of it's already been, uh, uh, much of it has been, been implemented or uh, authorized and appropriated, uh, and much of it has been used. It's out in the communities in many ways. But uh, uh, th what we'll have to watch is during the debate, during this lame duck session on the uh, so-called fiscal cliff, cliff uh, some Republicans will obviously want to uh, challenge the administration and Democrats by saying you've got to, uh, if we're going to be doing anything pertaining to entitlements, we've got to uh, look at the Affordable Care Act. I don't think that uh, the administration will want to go there. I trust the congressional Democrats will, will not allow it. That's something we have to be uh, mindful of. There's also a separate kind of locking in that may take place in the court of public opinion because my view for a while has been that Republicans had this small window of opportunity while the public opinion was still mixed about the content of Obamacare because my sense is once these policies and programs start going into effect starting January 1st in particular, a lot of them, the court of public opinion is going to realize, wait a second, we, we don't want uh, Republicans or Democrats to take this away. So I think that in that sense, there was this window window of opportunity which is rapidly closing. I think that's exactly right and we are, I think we're already beginning to see uh, s uh, some change in public attitudes toward the Affordable Care Act. We've already seen previous polls showing that many of the provisions of the act are very popular uh, like the ones that begin to close the donut hole in the Medicare prescription drug benefit and that, that allow uh, parents to uh, have their children on their, um, on their policies until age 26 if they can't find jobs that offer benefits. So. Uh, there are a lot, and also, I guess most importantly, the provision that uh, requires insurance companies to uh, uh, take all comers, in other words, not to be able to discriminate as they have in, in years past against people with pre-existing conditions. So I think the window has passed for a lot of the, the changes that the opponents of the legislation, uh, uh, what they wanted to do to it. So I think that we'll see it go forward. Let's go to what you alluded to before, which is some of the choices that states have now. Uh, and I use the term choices a little bit loosely, I guess. We're now starting to hear that certain uh, governors, Republican governors, are going to choose not to put in place, or at least they're now saying they will not be putting in place these uh, uh, state exchanges, which of course will trigger the government, the, the federal government, be uh, putting that in place. We're also hearing re uh, some resistance to the expansions that are put in place by the Affordable Care Act. Talk a little bit about how could that play out? Uh, what's going on and how might that actually play out logistically? Well, the Affordable Care Act uh, specifies that if a state is not willing or ready to implement uh, its exchange uh, on January the 1st, 2014, and actually show evidence uh, during the coming year, 2013, uh, that it will be able to operate its own exchange. And the government, the federal government, will set one up and operate it uh, for, those, for that state. Uh, what we have been seeing is, is a mixed bag. We've seen 
A lot of states, uh, uh, mainly those that are headed by uh, Democrats, saying they will go forward. They've made a lot of progress in getting things ready to have their exchanges uh, operational. Uh, you've got some states that have Republican governors that have been waiting, have been taking a wait and see uh, uh, stance. They they were waiting to see if the Supreme Court would uphold it and what would happen uh, on the most recent elections. And now that uh, uh, we see that it's going to go forward, a lot of those states are now. Uh, putting things in place to at least, uh, if not operate their own exchanges, then be <clears throat> able to do it in partnership with the federal government. And then there are some of those uh, that just simply are say, saying that they're not going to be doing it at all. And in those cases, the federal government uh, will step in and set up and operate those exchanges. So they will be in place. Is there not a risk that this idea of trying to kind of drag down the Affordable Care Act by not setting up the exchange could actually backfire in the sense that if the government does step in, sets up an exchange, and it works more or less well, that it actually becomes even more evidence that this was a good idea and actually hurts the, the, the anti-Obamacare cause, for lack of a better term. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's correct. I think that we will see that the exchanges uh, will be successful. Uh, some states will do them better than others, and it's you know it remains to be seen how the federal government will operate um, uh, exchanges in, in numerous states, which is probably the case. But I think it will be successful. Um, you know, the other thing you mentioned is the Medicaid expansion, and some some governors are saying that they're not going to be uh, taking the federal money to expand their Medicaid programs, and that's something that is their prerogative as a consequence of the Supreme Court decision. I think though, that the vast majority of the states will uh, go along and take that money. And as you, as you know, the federal government will pay 100% of the expansion or the cost of the expansion of the Medicaid program until 2016. And then uh, the states began to take a little bit more responsibility, but never more than 10%. Uh, so the federal government will always pay at least 90% of the uh, expansion for the expansion of the Medicaid program. That'll bring a lot of people into coverage. People who've not been eligible in the past, uh, individuals and families, uh, up to 133% of the, of the federal poverty line. So that'll be a very big, uh, big way of bringing more people into coverage. And the thing is, for those governors that are saying they're not going to do it, they're going to be getting a lot of pressure from health care providers in their own states, as well as insurance companies, I think, uh, to, to accept that money. They're, I think they're, going, they're saying that now for political purposes, but I think when the time comes, they'll want to accept that money. Uh, health, uh, hospitals in particular are wanting to make sure that uh, uh, the, the Medicaid program is expanded because this will uh, reduce the amount of uncompensated care, the bad debt that they've, uh, they've had to, uh, uh, you, know, can, you know, that's always affected their bottom line for many years now. Absolutely. I think that that is the way it's going to go in the end. We've been speaking with Wendell Potter. He's the former vice president of corporate communications at Cigna, the uh, author of the book Deadly Spin, and also a columnist with Huffington Post and the Center for Public Integrity. Wendell, pleasure as always to speak with you. Thank you, David. All right. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more after this.